the two biggest anti-establishment candidates, Donald Trump and self-described socialist Bernie Sanders, flying high. With Hillary Clinton hitting a new low, her support in Iowa dropping below 50% for the first time this year. America is sick and tired of lying, cliche-ridden, postulating politicians who couldn't spit out truth if you hooked them up to 30,000 volts and gave them a jolt every time a false promise comes out of their lips. Hey, we get that. But if the polls are to be believed, America may be on the verge of electing to the presidency either a billionaire who uses bankruptcy like other people use credit cards, or a surgeon who has no working knowledge of foreign policy or how a government really works. Has anyone really thought this out? Let us then loose the political animal, get the answers. She covers politics for the Federalist, and being so deep in the political weeds is battle pay for anybody. Bree Payton. He is the William F. Buckley Jr. Fellow in Political Journalism at the National Review Institute, Ian Tuttle. I thank you both for being here. Ian, I'm going to go ahead and begin with you. Ben Carson ties Donald Trump at the top in the Iowa polls. Ben Carson has no experience, as I said. Honestly, is it just that at this point he and the Donald can say anything they want, promise anything they want, they just don't have to back it up with any facts because people are just so tired of everybody else? Um, I think the, uh, Donald Trump has a little more uh, latitude in that regard just based on his uh, his history of statements. But um, for both of them, they're both benefiting from... Um, as you stated in your introduction, a sort of anti-Washington uh, sentiment that's running very deep. And I think uh, for a lot of conservatives, I've spent some time with Carson, at least on the campaign trail. I think for a number of them, the details are less important right now. What they see in some of these individuals is a sort of broad sweeping vision of the the type of the form of country that they want and they're not thinking necessarily about the logistics or the policy details but uh in a very in a very sweeping sort of way these people represent the type of america uh that they want now whether that translates to good electoral decision making uh is another matter but i think that's the impulse Bree, let's talk about that for a moment, because you're inside the Beltway, you cover things there, you know how politics works there. It's great to hear the phrases anti-Washington and we don't need cliches anymore and we want somebody fresh. But just for a moment, let's extrapolate. What would it be like for one or the other people who have no experience in government to get onto Pennsylvania Avenue and then have to work with the Congress, with the Senate, with the House, and all of a sudden have to do the things that a president really has to do? That's not as easy as people think. Sure. Well, I think, you know, that's definitely an interesting question, but I think that Trump and Carson's success of late um, is definitely evidence of voters, you know, they're just really sick of the GOP leadership right now. Um, it seems like the Republicans right now are prioritizing those who donate to them over those who vote for them. And so I think right now we're seeing a bit of backlash and people are kind of willing to take that risk and have outsiders come in and, you know, come into Washington. Is it any, any and let me come to you on something Bree just said here, is it any different though on the left? Because I think she's right. People are sick and tired of the right basically kowtowing to the people who give them a tremendous amount of money. But what about the left? I mean, aren't all politicians sure. basically the same at the end of the day? They do it, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, well, I think we're certainly seeing we're certainly seeing the same uh, impulse in the, the Sanders movement. Um, of course, the, it's a little different just in the, in the sense of all of the Democratic um, heads have been office holders um, at some level, all of them at uh, fairly prominent levels. So I think Republicans are a little more um, willing to go actually genuinely outside of politics to find uh, leaders. Bree, I want to go ahead and change up because I've only got a couple of minutes here and I want to hit you with this one too. Because Bernie Sanders and Martin O'Malley as well made a little bit of an intimation here over the weekend that just maybe the Democratic debates are rigged. They didn't use that word out loud here, but they sure are intimating it. It sure does seem that way that Debbie Wasserman Schultz and the rest of the DNC are trying to shield Hillary Clinton as best as they can and keep her away from a confrontation with Sanders. You agree or disagree? Well, I think, you know, I'm not really qualified to answer that question, but I think, you know, a way that the Democratic Party could combat these allegations or these suspicions, rather, um, would be to open it up and increase the number of debates. You know, they should really open up the dialogue so they can say, hey, look, we're not rigging it. You know, we really do want people to talk about these issues and we really want to flesh it out. You do get the feeling, though, that that's what's happening. I mean, that's that's a permeating thought that's going through the DNC right now, correct? As you talk to people, do you get the same concept idea that maybe somebody's just sort of moving this in a certain direction? 
Well, you know, that's definitely what a lot of people seem to think. And I think that, you know, the Democratic Party to combat that could really open up um, the number of debates that they're planning to have in order to, you know, kind of quash that uh, murmuring, quash those murmurings. Ian, let me ask you about what Chris Christie said this week. If he were elected president, he'd combat illegal immigration by creating a system to track foreign visitors the way FedEx tracks packages. Look, I don't think he meant go ahead and put a handbill on them and basically tape it to their head. But what he said, he backed up on it a little bit today. What he's saying is track them. So did he make another mistake in this, and again, and pretty much cut off his nose and, and end any chance he might have? Certainly not in the primaries. Immigration is, is the key issue, um, at least for a, for a number of voters. It's, it's what a number of conservatives feel very strongly about. And I think he's absolutely right. I've written about birthright citizenship. That's a secondary issue. Uh, visa overstays account for more than half of the illegal aliens in the country. Uh, having a solid, reliable tracking system to make sure that when someone's six-month temporary visa is up, we can go and say, hey, your time's up, time to leave and actually enforce that would do a whole lot to cut down on our illegal immigration problem. Unfortunately, we're all out of time here, but I do want to make a point that Bree Payton recently wrote a column called Why Aren't Democratic Candidates Proud of Planned Parenthood? I suggest everybody read it. It's a great column. Bree, we don't have time to get into it now, but we are going to have you back and talk about it some more because this one is not going away anytime soon. Bree Payton, Ian Tuttle, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Now here's your time. Tell us again, who's your choice for the GOP's 2016 nominee? I mean, now it looks like a battle between Donald Trump and Ben Carson. Are these your candidates? Newsmaxpolls.com. Tell us. We'll talk about it here. Stay with us. The fastest 60 minutes of news, the hard line, continues.